Welcome to our lesson on prediction intervals. So far we've learned the basis of correlation and regression which is used to make predictions and now we're going to expand on that idea a little bit and talk about intervals of prediction. You may recall that before we've developed confidence intervals for all sorts of measurements uh, from a sample that we're trying to use uh, to give us an idea of what's happening in the population. We can con uh, construct a confidence interval around a sample mean and then be 95, let's say, percent confident that the population mean is in that interval. And we can do the same thing for proportions and standard deviations. Well, now we can do the same kind of idea. We can make a, an interval around these predictions, right? We're going to predict a value for y based on this regression equation that's based on our sample of observed x's and y values. And instead of just getting a single point prediction for what we think y could be, we can hedge our bets a little bit better and give ourselves a 95% confidence interval for what we think this predicted y should be. So all we're doing is building a confidence interval around another measure. It's just that measure is no longer something that we observed from our sample, right? It's no longer the average that we got from our sample or the p hat that we got from our sample. It's now some predicted y that we get from a formula that was built on what we saw from our sample. Requirements. Just like before, all the same things basically for uh, regression that for every value of x there's a corresponding sample value for y and they're normally distributed about the regression line with the same variance. So now for a fixed and known x0 what we're going to do is we're going to build a prediction interval for our predicted y based on a specific x. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because if you're going to predict something out of a regression equation, you have to have an input, you have to have that x. Once you put that x into the equation, it spits out a y. Then we can build an interval around that y. So just like before, we have a margin of error that we're going to add and subtract to some measurement, and in this case the measurement is y hat, right, our predicted y. And this big old ugly looking thing is just the formula that we use to calculate that margin of error. Some technologies will do it for you, some technologies won't. So you might have to do this by hand depending on the technology that you want to use. I would strongly suggest using either Excel with uh, the analysis tool pack add-on or StatCrunch, both of which can do prediction intervals. You can also do it in Minitab and SAS and SPSS and a lot of the more complicated statistical analyses tools, but if you're not going to use those and you're trying to use some of the simpler, easier ones, uh, Excel and StatCrunch are the way to go. The standard error that's in this equation, see that little SE down there? This piece right here. That's the formula for that. It's just y minus y hat squared over n minus 2. We can go back to our simple example of uh, the data set that we used before, the 40 pairs of shoe lengths and heights, and we can construct a 95% prediction interval for the height of a person given that their shoe print is 29. If you remember from our example, our lesson on regression, you'll remember that all we did was take 29, plug it into this equation, and we got a predicted height of 174.3. That was our single point predictor, right? That's our best single point predictor for the height of someone who uh, has a shoe measurement of 29 centimeters. And remember, if our uh, regression line wasn't a good predictor, right, we couldn't use it, then the best single point prediction for someone's height who had a shoe size of 29 was just y bar, right? Just the average of all of our y's, which brings us back, you know, all the way back to our earlier lessons on single point predictors and then confidence intervals. Well, now we have a better single point predictor, y hat, and so now we can build a confidence interval around it instead of building it around 
the y bar, right? The, the mean of our y's. If we used Minitab, we would get uh, this um, result. And if we use StatCrunch, of course, we get the same result. You just have to know where to find it. It's down here. Okay. The 95% prediction interval for new just means the for the predicted y. Here's our predicted y. Um, here is the equation, right? Our correlation coefficient, our r squared, all the same stuff that we saw from before. And then in addition, all I did was ask it to also predict and give me a 95% confidence interval for this predicted y. And this is what we get. To show you how it's done, it's very simple. Stat, regression, simple linear, right? just like before. Choose our y variable. In this case, it was a shoe print. Shoe sizes gives it you know, like 9, 10, 11, those types of things y variable is our height. Down here is where you do your prediction interval. So I'm going to predict somebody that's 29, you know, has a shoe size of 29 and I want a 95 percent confidence interval compute. Make this a little bigger so we can see it all. So there's the equation that we got, you know, like normal. Here's our t-statistic for the slope. Remember, that's the one that tells us whether or not um, it's equal to zero, right? We're testing whether or not it has a, a correlation. Very, very small p-value, so it does have a correlation. And then down here, here's that prediction interval. You can see that, um, you know, unfortunately, you can only do one value at a time. But if you wanted to now go back and predict for someone who had a shoe size of 25, you can do options. Um, edit. That's what it is. Options edit. Brings you back to where you were before. See everything is still here. Shoe print, height, and now all you have to do is change this to 25. Recompute, and here are your new um, prediction interval, right? Results, lower and upper. For 25 with a new predicted y. So there's your new y hat and there's your new interval. So if you had to do a bunch of, you know, predict a height for a shoe of 30 and predict a height for a shoe of 32 and et cetera, et cetera, you could just keep doing options, edit, and go back and change that each time and get your new results each time. Simple, easy. Okay, what's actually going on here? Um, when we talk about the explained versus unexplained variation, remember we talked about what r squared was and it was the proportion of explained variation. We'll take a look at this picture. Here we have the horizontal line at y equals 9. That represents the mean of our data. So we've got a simple set of data. The average of our y's was 9. So here's our y bar. This blue line is the regression equation that we get from our x's and y's and it gives us 3 plus 2x right so it's got a slope of 2 goes through t 3 so there is our regression equation that means that if we take x equals 5 and if we didn't have the regression equation at hand then the best guess right the best point estimate we could have for our y output for any input really is just y bar Right, so our best guess when x equals 5 would be 9. However, when we look at our data, we see that when we have an input of 5, we actually had an observed output of 19. And we're off by that much, right? That's our total deviation. We're off by a total distance of 10 as far as using the average as the best guess for what should be paired up with 5. When we use our regression equation, Instead of guessing 9, we now guess 13. And this deviation that goes from the average up to 13, that's the amount of deviation that's explained. And then from 13 up to 19, that's the amount that isn't explained by our model, right? Our line basically improved, our regression line improved our guess by 4, but it's still off by 6. So the total deviation from y bar equals 9 
is that distance of 10. The explained deviation from y bar equals 9 was a distance of 4, right? And the unexplained was a distance of 6. This is just showing you those calculations again from this picture. The relationships we have is that our total deviation is y minus y bar, right? The observed y minus the mean is going to be equal to the predicted y minus the mean, the distance between the predicted and the average, plus the distance between the observed and the predicted. Now we square those so that we make them all positive, and there's also really a, a bigger reason why we square them. But, And then we add them together and we get that their sums are also the same. The, the sum of all these squares is going to equal the sum of that plus the sum of that. Now taking that formula into account we can see that the coefficient of determination, our r squared, is just the amount of the variation in y that is explained by the regression line. It's a ratio of the explained variation divided by total uh, variation. r squared is just the proportion of the variation in y that is explained by our model, in this case a straight regression line. And as we saw from our printout in this particular example, r squared was 0.661. So we can conclude that roughly 66% of all the variation in heights can be explained by shoe print length, or in other words, the length of your foot. And the other roughly 34% cannot be explained by shoe length. It's due to something else. Uh, race, um, genetics, right, other things. Okay, so that is everything you need to know about uh, constructing prediction intervals.